and welcome back to Wine Reform. Today marks the uh, final episode before the new year, so I look forward to seeing you guys all after 2020 is over and we have entered a new go around the sun, finally. Today we are going to mark the end of this year by tasting the, the homemade, or rather, kid-made Viognier. We've tasted a Viognier on this channel before. I was uh, in a video with my lovely mother and we were doing a biodynamic tasting kit. Now that Viognier was from France. This Viognier is from California. Since uh, it was tasted in a kit before, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little bit of background on Viognier. So Viognier is a white grape, primarily from the Rhone in France. Uh, however, it's grown all over the world. It is grown in both the Americas, North and South that being, and it has also grown in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and Israel. Uh, Viognier can be both sweet or dry. It can be both light and ever so slightly bitter, or it can be creamy and buttery and full-bodied. A bit like a Chardonnay that way. Fascinating. The flavor profile tends to be more along the lines of soft florals, stone fruits, citrus fruits, and tropical fruits. Uh, so a bit similar to a Chardonnay in that manner as well. However, of course, depending on where your grape was grown, how it was made, whether it was oak-aged or not, that'll all dictate what kind of flavor that particular wine will exhibit. So it's a really fun grape, and I am definitely excited to try this one that we made. So if you like Chardonnay and you're looking for something a little bit new, it's often recommended that you try a Viognier, and we'll find out today if that can hold true. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the bottle and then we can get started with our tasting. And we are back. I have just poured a glass of the Viognier and we can go ahead and evaluate it. Like always, the first thing we do when evaluating a wine is we look at it. Handy dandy white sheet of paper. Let's take a look. So it does have a little bit of sediment in it and I, I did make this one. So I didn't rack it as well as I could have. Whether or not that will affect the flavor is yet to be seen. It generally doesn't, but when a winemaker is trying to make a wine look good, the best thing they can do is get all the sediment out. People see sediment and they immediately think a wine is bad. Not always the case, but a clearer wine is a more appealing wine. Pale gold and yellow. And decent clarity, but obviously could be better. Future reference for me. Rack your wine a couple more times, or, you know, use an anti-sediment tip. Oops. No matter. Now we can go ahead and give the wine a good whiff and sniff. I'm gonna swirl it, introduce some oxygen into the glass, and uh, let that bring out all those little flavor molecules. Let them tickle my nose. I'm definitely getting that tangerine. Um, getting a tangerine smell out of it. It is, it smells acidic. Um, and I don't know if it, that's from the added sulfites, or if it's from any uh, sulfur dioxide that escapes the wine during the fermentation process. Um, but yes, I'm getting a bit of acidity, I'm getting that tangerine. Something that almost smells like a, it almost smells like a shortbread cookie. Very faint. And I'm getting honeysuckle. So it's a really very pleasant scent and I'm actually quite fond of it. Let's give it a taste. Ooh. So this wine is definitely on the lighter side. Uh, and the reason it's probably on the lighter side is because um, with kit wines, you cannot, and you, you absolutely cannot give it a round of malolactic fermentation. There is a specific reason for that. And when I find out the particular reason, I'll drop it in the comments, but yes, this one is on the lighter side. Uh, it has, it definitely tastes like, a bit like a honeysuckle bouquet. It has some decent acidity. I'd say it's fairly medium, but it's, it's palpable. This one is more on the citrusy side. So when I, when I tasted it, I could taste uh, lemon rind, 
a little bit like a limoncello because it had a sweetness to it, though it was dry. So it tasted, I could taste lemon rind, I could taste the juice of the tangerine, and then I could taste that honeysuckle. The acidity was medium. Uh, and this is a dry wine. I will say that any sweetness that comes out in this wine, it's not going to be from the sugar content of the wine itself. It's more going to be from those fruity um, flavors that are coming forward. So it might taste a bit sweet, but it's actually dry. And uh, in terms of body, very light body, uh, very pleasant, a nice short finish. Um, I'd say that this is a very refreshing wine. The alcohol, it feels medium. This one is, yep, 11.4% alcohol by volume, so it is medium alcohol. Overall, very, very pleasant. I'd say that if you like a uh, fresher, unoaked Chardonnay, then you're gonna like this Viognier in particular. Uh, I would look for an unoaked Viognier as well, and you will get a lighter, fresher wine. I'd say it's highly pleasant. I would definitely pair this with any sort of poultry dish. Um, especially one that uses very light seasoning. I do think that it would go quite well with chicken or turkey or even ham. I don't like ham, but if you do, I do think it would go well with it. I could almost pair, picture pairing this with like a, like a croque madame. I think that would be, if you like that, I think that'd be good. I'm very proud of this collaboration wine. It's very good. I can see pairing this wine with some good conversation via Zoom. Just this wine feels like something I would be, I would drink while I'm being social. Distanced, of course. Socially distanced, but social, but distance. I cannot wait to make more wines. I have a lot of plans. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Wine Reform. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is my final episode of 2020. Uh, I will be back in 2021. I am going through a little bit of a restructuring of the channel as my life is restructuring, and I'm sure everyone else's life is gonna be restructuring around this point. But you know, it's good to evaluate where you're at, take stock, and figure out what you wanna do, where you wanna be moving forward. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Uh, with this channel in 2021. So I look forward to it. If you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up. Every thumbs up, you know, it helps show this channel to maybe someone else who likes wines and just, you know, needs a little bit of a nudge to get in there. If you really like what you're seeing and you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely gonna be putting out more interesting, fun things. I'm listening to comments, uh, even if for some reason, sometimes I can't respond to them. It's, it's very weird. It has to do with a video setting that I have yet to learn about, but I will get there. Nonetheless, um, I am listening and I have a lot of really fun things that I think you guys will enjoy. And if there's something else that you wanna know or you haven't seen yet, drop it in the comments and I would love to talk about it. I'd love to do it. I love to demystify this whole wine industry as much as I can step by step because while it may on the surface seem kind of elitist it really it has very humble beginnings humble origins it starts in a vineyard it starts in a garden and I think there's nothing more approachable than that so let's demystify it together and I look forward to seeing you guys all in the new year so <sighs> that wine is so good all right, bye-bye.